Hola amigos! In today's video we're going to continue looking at procedural generation, and more specifically at sign distance fields, or SDF for short. A sign distance field is simply a function that calculates the distance from a given point to a surface. This has a large number of uses, from painting shapes, like in the case of this green heart, to calculating global illumination or a number of other complex effects. Let's look at a different example. Here we have the DSF of a circle of radius R, with the origin in the center of the quad. The outside is a gradient that goes from 0 to 1 minus R in the case of the sides, and to the square root of 2 minus R in the corners. On the other hand, the black values go from 0 to I minus R, Note that we cannot paint negative color values, so those appear as a continuous black area. In this case, the only pixels with an exact value of 0 are those that correspond to the perimeter of the circle. Here I'm using the same rendering as before. The red and green areas are the positive and negative values, respectively, and each line is at a distance of 0.1 units so there are 10 of them from the center to the sides. A quick note before we start. For all of the following examples, I will be using separate material functions, since that will make it easier to combine them later on. However, all of this can also be achieved with custom code functions and also pasting the nodes directly on the final material graph. The first function we'll see is the circle. First, we need to center the coordinate space. By default, it goes from 0 to 1 in both axes, so we need to multiply it by 2 and subtract 1. If you're using Unreal to make these functions, remember to check Use Preview Value as default on Function Inputs to give them default values, otherwise the compiler will throw errors if those inputs are empty. With our coordinates fixed, if we take the length of the vector defined by u and v, we get a gradient that represents the distance of the pixel to the center of the quad. If we now subtract a value, let's use 0.5 as an example, all the pixels closer to the center than that value will be now negative. Likewise, the values outside the circle are positive, increasing with the distance to its perimeter. Before we close this graph, Let's go back a few nodes, just before the length. We can use another subtract node here to offset the center and move our circle around. And with that, now our first sign distance field function is complete. There are multiple ways to calculate the SDF of a rectangle. The first one I will show here is cheaper, but the outside distance is incorrect as you can see if we zoom in. This pinching in the corners is a side effect from the way it's calculated. However, if you only need the inside value, it's a valid method. Let's jump into the function and see how it works. The first part of the graph is the same as in the case of the circle, to center the coordinate space and add an offset variable. This section will also be the same for the rest of the basic shape functions. If we take the absolute value of the position, we get two gradients, starting in the center of the quad and increasing on both axes. Now, like we did with the circle function, we can subtract some value to define an interior and exterior area for each axis. To combine these two, since the values outside are always larger than the ones inside, being negative, we can use the maximum of the values on each axis to find the intersection of these two areas. Let's move to the more expensive rectangle now. As we can see in this preview, the distance from the corners is correctly calculated and doesn't have that pinching artifact that the cheaper rectangle had. The graph is very similar to the previous one. We're using the same subtract method, but this time we're going to calculate the exterior and interior regions independently. 
This 0.5 multiply node can be safely ignored, this is just my personal preference for defining rectangles. For the outside part, the first step is to use the maximum of the value and zero to eliminate the interior. Afterwards, the length of that vector will be our exterior SDF. Let me add a temporary multiply by one node so we can preview this result. As you can see, the length node is giving us the correct distance and the maximum remove all the negative values from the interior. The inside SDF of our rectangle is calculated as it was in the case of the cheaper one, finding the maximum of both components. The difference in this case is that we need to get the minimum of that value and zero to eliminate all of the positive values, which corresponds to the exterior. Afterwards, we just need to add both partial results to get the final distance field. The final basic shape I'll cover in this video is the n-sided regular polygon. This version produces the same artifact that we saw on the cheap rectangle, but is complicated enough for this video, so I'll skip the more correct version for now. The graph starts with the same UV transform that we've used for other shapes. After these nodes, the first thing we need is the angle from the center, which we can find getting the r-tangent of v divided by u. Unreal has a cheaper version of the r-tangent 2 node, but the results would be the same in any engine. After adding pi to this result, we have a radial gradient that goes from 0 to 2 times pi. On the other side, we have this value that I labeled r, which is 2 times pi, divided by the number of sides of the polygon. And divided one by the other will make the range go from zero to the number of sides. Things will make more sense after getting the floor of this value. Let me update the preview. As we can see, we've divided the gradient radially by the desired number of sides. However, we need to offset it by adding 0.5 because we need to align the first phase to the vertical axis. The next pair of operations will get us almost there. First, multiply by the parameter that we called R, then subtract A. This will make each section of the polygon a gradient going from 0 to pi and minus pi in both directions. The default period of the cosine function in Unreal is not 2 times pi, as one would expect, but 1 instead. The next division node corrects that and is not needed in Unity or other engines. This cosine node will give us one of the final gradients that we'll use for the output SDF. The other one is simply a vector length node and we will combine both using a multiply. After this, the final operation is to subtract the radius parameter, just like we've done for other shapes. And I think those are enough shapes for one video, so let's move over on how to visualize them. The simplest method I'm going to teach is to render them as a solid. I use white here because it can be easily used as a mask or multiplied by different colors. This graph only has two nodes and to be honest it could be made a little simpler, but I find this solution quite elegant. The first node is a step function between the SDF input and zero. We'll use this result as the alpha value in a linear interpolate between one and zero. As I mentioned, this can be used as an opacity mask and multiplied by any value to change its color. Another way to visualize a sine distance field is using regularly spaced lines. This can be useful when debugging more complex shapes or to create interesting visual effects. To better illustrate this example, I've added a simple circle SDF to the default input of the function. We'll start this graph with a function that is available in HLSL and other languages called fwidth. 
to recreate it in Unreal, we'll add the absolute values of ddx and ddy. Afterwards, we'll multiply it by 0.5 to reduce its range. And then, we're going to both subtract it and add it to an input value, which will be our line thickness. These two will be the minimum and maximum inputs of a smooth lerp function. Its alpha will be determined by the line positions, which we will do next. First, we need to divide the SDF by the distance parameter. After this node, we'll need to get the fractional part, but we'll add 0.5 before the frac node and subtract 0.5 after it. The fractional value will produce these step gradients and the subtract operation will get them in the negative range. Following this, an absolute value node and finally multiply it by the line thickness again to get the values in the correct range. Now we have our lines and the use of F width will more or less guarantee that they stay crisp. To color the interior and exterior we can use the same technique described to render them as solid, with parameters for both colors. Finally, to color the lines, first we'll multiply the color SDF by the completed line mask, and then use a linear interpolation between that and a new color parameter, using the line mask again as the alpha. For the final section of this video, we will cover some of the most common operations between distance fields. We'll need some shapes to combine. For this example, we'll use a circle and a six-sided polygon with different offsets. The first operation is a union or merge, and it's extremely simple. Since the values in the interior of a sine distance field are always smaller than the exterior ones, we can use the minimum of both inputs to merge them. Likewise, the intersection of both shapes can be found calculating the maximum value of both. Basically, we are expanding the outside region until the only negative values left are the ones that both shapes have in common. Note that to better illustrate this example, I've replaced the circle input for a rectangle. The next of our Boolean operations is the subtraction. Its principle is again quite simple. We already learned that we can find the intersection calculating the maximum of both shapes. Using that, we can perform a subtraction if we inverse one of the inputs, multiplying it by minus one. It is important to note that in this case, the order of factors is relevant. The shape that is inverted will be the one subtracted from the other one and not the other way around. The last combination function that I will show is the rounded merge. Unlike the normal one, this one will smooth the transitions between both shapes, giving the result that rounded look. I'll add a debug time sign node on the blend radius parameter to better show the effect. This graph is a bit more complex than any of the other ops. It starts by subtracting the blend radius parameter from both shapes. This will enlarge them by that amount. Next, we can interpret the surface of the two shapes we are combining as the x and y coordinates of a blend space, using an append node. Then, we'll limit it to only the interior or negative values with the minimum of that and zero and calculate the length of that vector to the origin. Since this is the interior space, we need to multiply this result by minus one. On the other side, we'll merge both original shapes, not the grown ones, using a minimum as we saw before, and then the maximum between it and the radius to get the correct values for the outside. The final step is to add this to the result of the multiply by minus one from before to shrink the shapes back to the correct size. 
Since I explained the rounded merge, I changed my mind. I'll do one more and show how to do a rounded intersection. This is easy to understand, thinking of it as the opposite of the merge. The function is identical, except for the following differences. First, both maximum nodes are replaced by minimum, and vice versa. Next, we add the blend radius to the shapes instead of subtracting them, to shrink instead of enlarging them. And finally, the location of the multiply by minus one node is on the blend radius before calculating its minimum with the shrunk shapes. And with this, we are done with Boolean Ops, but I still have a couple more functions that I want to show. The first of which is a blend that can be used to morph between two different shapes. By this point, some of you might be already guessing that this is achieved with a simple linear interpolation between the two inputs, and you would be absolutely correct. The last one is a bit less intuitive, but equally simple. It can be used to generate a ring of a specified radius centered on the perimeter of the shape. To calculate this, we just need to get the absolute value of the SDF to make the inside positive, and then subtract the radius to expand the perimeter. The last thing I want to show before we end is how to rotate these shapes. It can be done with a rotation matrix using code, but for this tutorial we'll stick with nodes. And since the video is getting quite long, I'll skip the trigonometry and let you guys copy the graph. Let me know in the comments if you want a more detailed explanation of what's happening here. With all these shapes I've shown today and the ways to combine and manipulate them, you can try recreating a logo or making interesting animated patterns. Have fun experimenting! If you made it this far, thank you for watching the video. And I don't want to end it without giving very special thanks to all of you who have subscribed. Feel free to post in the comments suggestions for future tutorials or effects that you would like to see explained.